Aha had one of their big breakups again, and and I figured, okay, I got to do something else, and it didn't feel natural to do a Savoy album then, so I thought like, oh, maybe I'll try to write something for new, for some other people, you know. Uh, and that was really my, uh, the sort of uh, starting point for this album. Uh, I think Aha was doing is sort of one of their Goodbye Tour, I'm losing count uh, which one it was, but <laughs> they were doing one of their Goodbye Tour, and I had my buddy Jimmy Neko helping us out on the, uh, with the support on that tour and so I had written a bunch of songs and and I was sort of dreading getting somebody that I really didn't respond to as a demo singer to sort of yeah. see what that would sound like you know and then he showed me uh, some tapes of her from some live shows I thought like damn that's so cool and I thought that would be wonderful if she can help me out on some of these songs I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea who, who she was. I, I, you know, she just came in and I got the shivers. And then whenever I got the shivers, it was like, oh, what's happening? I just wanted to hear a version of this song. But suddenly I feel like, oh, she's giving it a whole different thing that I didn't have before. And that's really what happened. I mean, she would come in and sing a couple of songs and I was, I, and I got, I was sort of like, damn, that's so, that's so nice. It's a long time since I've had that feeling. I'm Zoe. I'm 20. I'm from New Jersey. My dad knew Paul when I was younger, maybe 14, and I'd been doing cover music through a music school um, in New Jersey. My dad was working with Paul and one day I just went in and started doing a couple songs here and there after school. Growing up I was always in the studio with my dad, always. From the time that I was the toddler, I was there. There are videos of me when I was three, smacking a guitar, telling everybody in my family to sit around and watch me sing. How does it feel to uh, make your first album alongside an artist like that who has sold millions and millions of records? Kind of unbelievable, <laughs> really. I mean, it's hard to fathom and I just feel really honored and really lucky and blessed to have been a part of something like that. Many people are wondering about what is happening with Savoy. In the years after her broke, I, I must have written like 60 songs or whatever. So that is another album that I'm working on. So it will happen at some, at some point in the future, a new Savoy album? Absolutely. Mm, great. We are in the process of uh, remastering all the old stuff. That's, uh, that's also been a cool process to sort of go back there and get it out on vinyl and all types of projects. Are yeah. there also unused material from the various recording sessions? plan for these reissues? I think we'll, we'll probably do the albums as they were and then there will be outtakes albums on the side. No, I, I don't think it's definite at all. I think it's, uh, you know, whenever we say definite, <laughs> that's when the red lamp, uh, lamp starts blinking. It's uh, Because you love it, playing with a heart. The last tour we did was a very fun tour, you know, we had a good time and where the album gets like pulling teeth, the live thing actually, that's where it works. And the only reason for, the, for that is because we actually have to be in the same room at the same time together to sort of meet face to face because that way we're actually super civil. Because you, do, oh, you also have a shockingly strong fan base after all these years yeah. uh, worldwide. And that mm. must, uh, you feel like you have an obligation to them as well. Yeah, we don't feel obligated though, but I mean, we, we, but we, we feel grateful that it's there. We all have that kind of thing. If you have something to present, present it. There shouldn't be a sort of a tactical reason for not presenting it. So if you do have material that you feel like, oh, why not? It's like, I get it. You get it.